Hiya, welcome to Vicky Makes and Builds. Okay, I've got a rather large puzzle haul for you today. My collection has sort of exploded somewhat recently, so <laughs> I thought I'd better get one done. So, just diving right in, I'm going to, I've got quite a lot of sort of collections with this puzzle haul, so I'm going to try and do it methodically. And I'm going to start with these ones over here which are all Ravensburger puzzles and these are all related to speed puzzling and I will just go through them all with you now. So some of them I've actually done already so you might hear some rattling pieces and some of them I haven't they've still still got the cellophane on but I really have got a lot to cram in because <laughs> it's not far away now the world's it's exciting stuff but quite nerve-wracking too anyway one of the ones is circular i got one of the circle of colors i have done one before i did one called donuts they're like gradients but they have like images on them so this one is called ocean and it's largely a dark blue background but you know all the fish are different colors working around the puzzle and it's a really pretty puzzle this is now i don't know if they will give us circular puzzles to do in the worlds but i figured they might so <laughs> you never know so i speed ran that one and i won't give you the time just now because i'd like to do another video where i go through all my speed runs but this was a really nice fun one to build so that circle of colors We've then got this one here, which is called Minu's Pond of Daydreams. So it's kind of how it sounds really. I'm, I'm assuming this is Minu down here, little girl with pink hair. And there's a lot of pink on this puzzle. You've got some pink fish and some pink lilies. The fish are actually floating above the water. So I guess that's where the daydream part comes in. And then you've got kind of a pond with some lily pads and reeds and things like that. So it's a really lovely image. I've speed run this one as well already. It actually was quite tough, but it was really nice to do. It looked really lovely at the end. So that's me news pond of daydreams. This is the third one I have done already it's called an evening in pisa and it's basically a scene from the town of pisa and you've got the leaning tower in the middle in the background and this nice wee street at the front with cafes and blue car here and some trees and things like that i actually just recently speed ran this in and i filmed it in real time this is one i am doing for my august special video for members only on youtube and on patreon and yeah it was interesting filming it in real time i was just i didn't realize how much i talked to myself when i puzzled so i was kind of nattering away but anyway it was fun to do i really enjoyed it it's a really beautiful image again quite challenging i didn't know if this was going to be easy or hard but it was quite tough but i really enjoyed it so that's an evening in pisa this one is one i haven't done yet this one's really cute it's a lovely image it's called puffinry and it's a beach scene you've got the sea in the background you've got the sky you've got a lighthouse and you've got all these puffins kind of in the grass and in the flowers and in the middle here there's two puffins with their heads together and it's sort of cartoonish. It's an illustration and it's by Elsa Black. The name's on the front of the puzzle here. And I'm actually really looking forward to speedrunning this one. It just looks so much fun. I, I liked the image as soon as I saw it. So I've got that one. This, I just fell in love with the image on this, but I don't think it's going to be an easy one. <laughs> well, I guess we'll see. Sometimes I'm surprised and ones I think are going to be hard aren't hard and then vice versa but I just really loved the image it's called Yosa Kura and it's got this lady here she's wearing a kimono she's got a parasol and there's some lovely cherry blossoms around her We've got a crescent moon there it's dark background and it's just gorgeous it really is really lovely this image I'm looking forward to building it how well I'll do speedrunning it, I don't know, but I will do a speedrun on it. I just thought this was really lovely. And the last one of the 500 piece Ravensburger bunch is this one here. This one is called Land of the Dinosaurs. I decided on a whim to have a wee look around the charity shops because I live right near the town of Stirling and I have to pop in on occasion for groceries and stuff like that. And so I often do just pop in and do a wee circuit of the charity shops around about. And I thought, hmm, maybe there's some 500 piece Ravensburgers. Now I've not had a great deal of luck with that. 
I did find one. I found the factory worker, which I've speedrun already. I featured that in my last puzzle practice video, uh, speed puzzle practice video. And there was only one charity shop I found one in, and it was this one. It was in amongst all the kids' puzzles. So I'm glad I took a minute to look in there. It wasn't in the adult puzzles. Anyway, it's called Land of the Dinosaurs, and I really hope that it's complete. But even if it isn't, I think it would be a good one to speed run. It's a cool image. It's just as it says, really. It's a nice kind of jungle landscape, got some water, mountains in the background, gorgeous colours, got some trees and then it's full of dinosaurs. So that is my last of the 500 piece Ravensburgers. Okay, so the other puzzles I bought for some speed puzzling practice are these ones, but these are different sizes. So my reasoning behind these was I never would have got them to be honest if I hadn't seen a video on the YouTube channel Puzzle with Amelia. She did a video recently about how to practice speed puzzling and she has quite a scientific approach. She goes through it step by step. She's got five tips on how to do it and one of the things she suggests for focusing purely on speed and nothing else is to do some smaller piece count puzzles and Another thing she suggests, and this is more to do with like endurance and kind of managing to keep the intensity going, I guess, for a long period of time, because it is a long time that you're sitting speed puzzling and it's quite an intense process. The thing she suggests for that is to maybe try a larger piece count puzzle, like a thousand pieces and speed run that and build up your kind of endurance with it. So what I did was I went out to my local shop who sells some Ravensburger puzzles and I bought three Puzzle Moments by Ravensburger and one 1000 piece puzzle. So I'll show you those just now. So Puzzle Moment is uh, like a series that Ravensburger do and it's just small puzzles basically. So I got a 99 piece one. It's in this cute cube shaped box and it's just called Llama and it's a really fun image. Got lots of colourful llamas on it. They've got like bright pink pom-poms and tassels and things on them and in the background you've got this kind of landscape looks a bit like Peru maybe and it's just a really fun wee image so that's 99 pieces. I also did, I've, I've speed run these already by the way and I'm wanting to put some shorts up on these so look out for that because there'll be some last piece shorts going up on these ones as well. Right so my next one puzzle moment is 200 pieces and it's this one here and it's called Mix Tape and this one was really fun as well it's got loads of cassette tapes basically old vintage cassette tapes and it was quite nostalgic doing that I remember listening to cassette tapes at one point and it's also really lovely that there's a gradient going on in the background so that was really nice as well. One thing that threw me though is that these boxes are square and it doesn't show the whole image on the front of the box. It took me till I was about halfway through the puzzle to realise that actually the full image is on the back and it's a rectangular puzzle. I just thought it was a square puzzle <laughs> but it's not, it's rectangular. So that is mixed tape. I'm going to try and put these down here as I work through them so, <laughs> so I don't, so I know where I'm at. I know what I've done. This is the last of the three puzzle moments that I got. It's 300 pieces and it's called Flowers in New York and again it's another fun pretty image. In the background you've got some kind of old looking buildings, you've got a yellow taxi and then in the foreground you've got a big pot full of flowers and they're really pretty flowers just kind of spraying out of there so it's a really really nice image. Similar to mixed tape this one also is a, t is a portrait rectangular puzzle. It's not square but I kind of went into this one knowing that from having done mixed tape so it's a bit more kind of on the ball with it but there is again a full image of it on the back of the puzzle. So those three were really good fun, really fun to build. And lastly I haven't speed run this one yet. I've not actually speed run a thousand piece puzzle at all ever. I did speed run the Gradient Crypt last year, I think it was, and I just did that just because I was curious to know how long it would take me. I wasn't doing any kind of practice or anything with that one, but that's not a thousand pieces, that's 631 pieces. So yeah, this is going to be interesting, but in the same shop I got the Puzzle Moments, they also have some thousand piece Ravensburgers, and I just spotted this one and I thought it looked fun. So I got this one. It's a Pokemon puzzle. <laughs> 
I do quite like Pokemon. It's called Pokemon Showdown. And I guess you can see why. I've got a group of Pokemon here, group of Pokemon there, and they look as though they're about to have a showdown. So yeah. I thought that looked really fun. I think that won't be too bad to speed run, too worried about it or worried about the challenge. You've got bold, bright colours because it's a cartoon, obviously. There's enough going on in this puzzle to work with. So I'm looking forward to speed running that. Be interesting to see how long it takes me to do a thousand piece puzzle. And there will be thousand piece puzzles at the Worlds too, but only in the pairs finals, I believe, and also in the teams. So I would be doing it with either Juby or with Jeanette, Juby and Donna Louise, a thousand piece puzzle. But this one, I'm obviously I'm going to speed run on my own. I don't have anyone who can speed run it with me, to be honest. My kids probably wouldn't be up for that, to be honest, even if it is a Pokemon puzzle. So yeah, so I'll just do it solo and we'll see how that goes. Okay, so that's all the speed puzzles that I've got in this haul today. I'm going to move on to these ones to my left now. Pop, pop this one over here because these are all also Ravensburgers. There's a lot of Ravensburgers in this haul today. So these are more the, the collection puzzles that I've been gathering together. So I'll start with this one. I recently built in a video a few weeks ago the metallic mint crypt. Prior to that I had done the pink crypt and I had also built the gradient crypt. I've been building up my collection of crypts so I do have the silver but I haven't actually built that yet. I do have the gold and I also have the black. I also have the black crypt puzzle. And I enjoyed the metallic mint crypt so much and I love the idea of piece counts being the same so you can mix and match the colours. So after that video I also discovered that there were other crypts that I didn't know about. So I thought right I'm going to try and complete my collection. So here's what I've managed to do so far. This is the puzzle that I didn't realise existed in that video. I kind of went through all of the crypts that I knew of in that video, but I didn't know about this one at the time. It's neon green. It's the neon green crypt, and it has the same cut pattern as the metallic mint and the black. So there's quite a few with this, with 736 pieces, and it's a really cool colour. I mean, it really pops, I, and especially with this black box and then the neon green kind of in the foreground. It just looks like so much fun. So I'm really looking forward to doing that. That's the neon green one. Then we've got this one, which I actually did mention in that video, the Metallic Mint Crypt video, but I didn't have it at the time. I'd only ordered it. This one is the Crypt Universe Glow. And it's one of the few crypts that actually isn't solid color. It's near enough but it does have some detail on it. It's got stars and it glows in the dark. So I guess it's kind of like a space puzzle really, but it has a funky cut pattern like all the other crypts. And actually this one is the only cut pattern of this kind. I assume they'll maybe bring out more, uh, but it's got 881 pieces this one. So it's the crypt with the most amount of pieces and the pattern as a general rule, I've not looked at it in great detail, but the pattern tends to have lots of smaller circles within the rectangular puzzle. So it looks like so much fun. I'm really looking forward to this. And I think it's going to look cool when it's glowing in the dark at the end. So that is the Universe Glow Crypt that I just recently bought as well. Now, the other crypts that I am aware of are older crypts. There is one called, I think it's called Colourful Spiral, and that's the other one that I know of that isn't a solid colour. It's got a cut pattern. Is it the same as the gold one? I forget what the cut pattern is on that one. And it's really lovely, but it's very, very difficult to find. I've not been able to find it. So I am on the lookout for that one, and I would love to get it in order to complete my collection but I haven't been able to find it as yet. The other ones that I am also aware of that are older are the kind of vintage um, crypt puzzles that came out in the 90s and I have one of those. They're called Think Crypt. So I have one that I just recently got from eBay and there's a Think Crypt one two and a three. This is Think Crypt 2 and it is 631 pieces. It has the same cut pattern as the gold and the gradient but this one is a gorgeous blue colour. It's really lovely. I'm going to take the lid off um, because it's out of the bag. It's a used puzzle. 
it came with the guide which somebody has opened at some stage and actually the bag that the pieces came in is still there but this colour it's so nice it's kind of metallic a little bit like the metallic mint but it's it's more of a blue colour and it's just Oh, it's lovely. It seems to be in good condition. All the pieces are here, so I am told. So I'm looking forward to building this and seeing what it's like finished. I was really pleased to get that. Now, I think the other two Think Crypts, one is white and one is pink. One is white and one is pink. One of them is 736 pieces, so my assumption is that it's the same cut as the black and the metallic mint and the neon green, but the other one is 700 pieces, and that's the only one I'm aware of with 700 pieces, so I'm not sure what the cut pattern is on that one, and I'm really intrigued by it, so I forget which one is which. I don't know if it's the white one that's 700 pieces, but I'm on the lookout for those as well, the, the one and the three. They do crop up sometimes on eBay, but the ones I've found, I don't know, I've had kind of really vague answers about whether or not the puzzles are complete and things, and I would hate to buy one and for it to end up not being complete. So I'm going to do my kind of due diligence on that and try and find one that's complete and hopefully complete my crypt puzzle collection. Well, I'm almost there. It's really just the older ones I need to get hold of now and any new ones that happen to come out. Oh, and of course there's the custom crypts, which can be any colour you like, really. So I may well get a custom crypt as well. But I, uh, yeah, I was, I was really excited to get this and I'm really looking forward to putting this one together. So those are the crypt puzzles. Now then, another collection that I have started to build up is these ones in front of me here. Now there are more than I current there are more in the collection than I currently have. I have three. They're called Abandoned. They're from the Abandoned series of puzzles. You may have heard of them, but if you haven't, I will talk to you about them. So basically the images are scenes or places that have been long since left to go derelict. They've been abandoned essentially and they've become overgrown and rusty and old and I don't know what it is that fascinates me about these images but something does. <laughs> I just kind of feel like there's a story behind them and some of them are a wee bit spooky, some of them are just sort of kind of sad you know and I don't know there's just something about them and I really really have liked the images for quite a while, ones I've seen on Facebook and Instagram and things like that. I've always thought, you know, one day I'll, I'll get those. So I'll show you the ones I've got and I'll sort of tell you about some of the ones I don't have and that I'm on the lookout for. So this one here is called Hotel Vacancy and it's, as it sounds, it's an old hotel, was probably quite grand at some point. We've got a big spiral staircase, there's some nice big windows that have been smashed and the moonlight shining in. You've got ivy growing in and, and taking over. There's an old piano that's broken and a couple of cats in there roaming the ruins. And it's not, they're not dingy images. They are dark in places, but there are some lovely colours going on here. You've got some red here where there's an old rug some purple and sort of light blue where the moonlight's shining in. You've got yellow where there's like lights and green obviously where there's all this plant life encroaching on the building. So it's just, I just think it's really nice. I love it. I really, really love it. So that one's called Hotel Vacancy. This one is called Forgotten Arcade. It's, again, as it sounds, this is an old arcade. You've got all the old arcade games kind of around the edge. You've got a whack-a-mole. You've got a, a, like a fortune telling machine here. There's an old broken creepy clown at the front here. So it's just, again, there's light going on in here. There's colour. It's like it's been forgotten but is still going, you know, <laughs> which kind of conjures up all these imaginative ideas about ghosts maybe or not. I don't know. I think this would be good to do at Halloween, these puzzles. But anyway, this is the Forgotten Arcade and I think so far this one is my favourite. There's just something about it. I really, really like it. Similar colour colour palette. You've got these purples and greens and 
dark blues and things like that. So I'm really looking forward to doing that one. And then the last one I have in my current collection is this one here. It is called Gloomy Carnival and it's a fairground. So this one is outside and you've got some sky here, which is, it looks like maybe a sunset. It's kind of purple and blue and you've got a broken Ferris wheel. Centerpiece is this carousel here in the middle. There's a bumper car here at the front and the bottom right corner. Yeah, so that's the gloomy carnival and that's an old fairground. Now the other ones that are in existence that I will be getting hold of at some point when I can replenish my funds after buying all these puzzles. There's also a tattered toy store. There is a deserted diner and both of those I know I can get hold of either on eBay or on I think they're both available on the US Amazon. I've not been able to find them on the UK Amazon, unfortunately, but I can get them on the US Amazon if needs be. And so they're fairly easy to get hold of. And there's a, oh, the other one um, that is very easy to get hold of that I haven't got yet is the Deserted Department Store. So that one is, yeah, that's quite readily available to get. So I will get that one at some point. So that's another three. I also, wasn't aware of but was told about by one of my patrons another one that I didn't find in spite of googling it it didn't come up in any searches there is another one called Lost Empire and that one is sort of tall buildings and there's some kind of rubbish at the front I believe and I didn't even know that one existed. It just wasn't, it didn't come up in any searches. I'm not sure if it's older than the others, but it seems to be exceptionally rare. I have not been able to find one for sale. I saw one that had been sold and it sold for like quite a lot of money for a thousand piece puzzle. It was like $125 or something like that. So that would be amazing if I could somehow get hold of that, but I think there might be a lot of luck involved in there as well. But anyway, that's the only other one I'm aware of. If there are any other abandoned series puzzles that I haven't mentioned that you maybe know about, let me know, because I would really love to complete that collection as well. There are a similar line of puzzles to the abandoned puzzles called the Lost series, and there's quite a few of those, a similar idea. It's more sort of rooms, like an old palace, sitting room and there's uh, like an oak spiral staircase one there's a there's one called the madhouse and they're i don't know they're, they're a bit more creepy <laughs> those ones are but they intrigue me as well so it may well be that i'll start to collect the lost series as well but they're a similar idea to the abandoned series but i really really did like the abandoned series so i've started to collect those so i hope you like those next collection also ravensburger you may remember a few months ago, I did a Ravensburger challenge puzzle and it was a Super Mario Brothers puzzle. In fact, it's here on my shelf. And I really, really, really enjoyed it. And there's actually quite a few challenge puzzles in existence that I really like. I don't like all of them. Not a big fan of the Stormtroopers one. I, I am a fan of Star Wars, as any of my long-term subscribers will know, but I just don't relish doing that one. It looks kind of boring. <laughs> I hate to say it, but well, maybe it's just because it looks super hard. I don't know, maybe I will get it in order to complete the collection one day, but there's ones like that that I'm not so fussed about, but there are other ones that just look so much fun. Mario's Nintendo, and there are other Nintendo ones, and one of them I have got in front of me here. So, this was a gift off a very good friend of mine. In fact, both of these were gifts off a very good friend of mine. And this top one here is a Nintendo one as well, and it's an Animal Crossing one. So it's from the game Animal Crossing, and it's got all the heads of all the villagers, I assume it's all of them, just floating about on top of this green background. So there is, the thing I like about this one is it looks challenging and difficult, but there's more to it. There's more colour to it. So, you know, it's going to be hard, but also doable, <laughs> like the Mario one. So I am really looking forward to building this. Oh, this is going to be so much fun. So that is one of my new challenge puzzles. This one is a challenge puzzle that I didn't know existed until recently. It's the Smurfs. 
Haha! <laughs> there are just lots and lots and lots of Smurfs. Obviously there's white and blue because they've got blue bodies and white hats. But there's also Papa Smurf. So there's little, little splashes of red. And we've also got Smurfette as well sprinkled in this image. So there's some yellow. That looks like a present. It's yellow and red as well. And there's some green there. And you've also got the villain here, Gargamel, just poking his head in the corner here. So again, looks challenging, but there's enough differences to make it doable. So I, I really do like that. I think that one is really good fun. There is another one I have that I don't have yet, but it's on the way. And that one is a Pac-Man challenge puzzle. So these are just images and things from my childhood that I still enjoy now, that my kids enjoy also in, in many cases, and that I used to love when I was a kid. And so, you know, Pac-Man is just classic. I loved that when I was a kid. Mario, I have always loved and still love now. My kids both love Mario as well. Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing, I got sucked into that game when it first came out, the New Horizons version of it. So, so uh, these, I just can't wait to do that. I think these are going to be so much fun to do. And there are other ones I've got my eye on, especially a Looney Tunes one. I've been wanting a Looney Tunes puzzle for quite a long time. I love the Looney Tunes. I used to watch Bugs and Daffy a lot when I was a child. Love the Bugs and Daffy movie. And there is a Looney Tunes one. Again, will be a challenge, but there is a lot more to the image on that one. It's lots of Bugs Bunny heads and then there's, you've got the other characters and stuff sprinkled in there as well. So that is one that I've got my eye on to get. I think there's a Jolini one as well, which looks really good fun and several others. So yeah, I am looking to build up my Ravensburger Challenge puzzle collection. They really do, really do look like a lot of fun. So I was so chuffed to get those. So, less and less puzzles on my table now. My next one that I will mention. So this little group of puzzles here on my right are puzzles that were gifted to me. So this one here is a wooden puzzle. It's called Playful Parrots and it's by Uni Dragon. Uni Dragon is a wooden puzzle company that I have had my eye on to try for quite a long time. Their puzzles just look beautiful. In fact, there's a few wooden puzzle companies I'd love to try. So far, I've only done Wentworth and I've done a Wood Best's wooden puzzle, both of which I really enjoyed. This one, Uni Dragon sent me. They asked me if I would do a video on it and they sent me this puzzle, which I chose out of the whole bunch. I mean, I, it was hard to choose. There's so many lovely ones. And me being me, I picked the largest size, <laughs> which is royal size. And this one is 620 pieces. And it's basically just, it's a gradient essentially, but it's a row of parrots sitting on a branch. So it's shaped um, like the birds and the branch. And there's lots of whimsies, of course, which you come to expect from wooden puzzles, but I can't wait to do this. It looks lovely. In fact, this video will be coming very soon when I build this puzzle. And I can't wait. I, I really, I would love to thank Uni Dragon so much for sending me this. I'm really excited to do this puzzle. It's really gorgeous. So that's Uni Dragon. This puzzle. This one is a corkboard puzzle. It's a Seiko puzzle from the 90s. Now I've never done a Seiko puzzle before at all. I've never done any of the cardboard jigsaw puzzles. I like some of the images on them. I've heard about them. I've seen some of the images. I don't see many of them over here in the UK, it, to be perfectly honest with you. So I've just never really picked one up. But this one was gifted to me by one of my subscribers. Um, she's called Betty and she's from the US. And I think it was last year after I'd done my first wooden puzzle, I went with puzzle. And she asked me if I'd ever done a corkboard puzzle. And I said, actually, no, I, I haven't. And I said, I'd be really interested to try one. And she said, I've got an old corkboard puzzle that I think you'd really like and she sent it to me and she basically said accept this as a 40th birthday present because I was turning I turned 40 last year <laughs> so I just I was overwhelmed with gratitude for this and the image I really I can't wait to try it I really can't wait to try it I've looked at the pieces it just looks like it's going to be really fun to to build it's called the Pelican King and the artist is James C. 
Christensen and he has done a few pieces of artwork for Seiko on these corkboard puzzles specifically. There's a couple of other artists that have. I did a little bit of googling about them. They all seem to have kind of come out in the 90s and they just they look really really fun. It's got a irregular edge just kind of goes in and out. Very dark background, some detail, but very dark. And then in the foreground, just in the middle, you've got the centerpiece, which is this Pelican King, and there's a pelican sitting on his head. And as soon as I saw it, it put me in mind of a character from the movie Labyrinth. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Labyrinth. It's quite an old movie now, but it's sort of fantastical. And it's got this character in it that has and he's an old guy and he's got a long white beard and he has a bird on his head the bird looks different to this doesn't look like a pelican but the guy looks really really similar and as soon as i saw it i thought oh my goodness it looks like the guy from uh, labyrinth so i j and it's right up my street because it's kind of fantastical looking and I don't know. I just, I loved it. I, I really was quite taken by the image as soon as I saw it. So I want to thank Betty so, so much for sending me this. This is one I will keep in my collection for all time and take very, very good care of. The pieces are quite delicate. I think when you put corkboard puzzles together, they really stay together quite solidly. So having been built before, taking them apart, I think can be quite tricky, but um, Betty's really really looked after this puzzle and she really went to great lengths to package it really sturdily for the trip overseas and it came and it's just it's brilliant and so I would like to thank you so much Betty for this this is a really really lovely and thoughtful gift and I will take good care of it and I can't wait to build it I'll be doing a video on this one as well oh and it's 500 pieces by the way I don't know if I mentioned that my next puzzle gift is this one here and this is also from one of my subscribers she got in touch with me as a lady called lynn and she's from the uk and she emailed me to tell me that she really enjoys my puzzle channel and that she would love to give me a puzzle to fit in with my current collection of vintage hay puzzles now in case you don't know i had quite a lucky charity shop haul a few months ago where there was one shop with i don't know there's about seven or eight hay puzzles in and they were all in these triangular boxes and there was a couple of 2000 pieces there was a couple of 1500 pieces and there were three or four 1000 piece puzzles one of them i've done in a video that was called captain flint's party and it transpired there were two pieces missing from that one of them I am currently building, that's called Welcome. That's by Mordillo, the artwork on that. I'm, I'm in the process of building that because I really would love to see if the missing pieces from one puzzle have become mixed up with one of the other puzzles because in, in Captain Flint's party, I actually found an extra piece from a different puzzle. So possibility that there's been some kind of mix up going on there. I hope so, but we'll see what happens. And... A lot of the artwork in these puzzles, that, as I say, there was one more Dillo. A lot of the artwork was by an artist called Jean-Jacques Loup. And this one that Lynn sent me, it's from 2001. And it's another Jean-Jacques Loup puzzle. It's 2000 pieces. So there'll be three 2000 piece puzzles I've got in these vintage, in this vintage hay puzzle collection. And it's called Noah's Ark. And it's, again, very similar style artwork. Obviously, it's the same artist, so that makes sense. But it's Noah's Ark. And it's like a cross-section of Noah's Ark. And you can see all the wee rooms and pens with all the animals in. <laughs> and they're quite crammed in. And you've got, it's a white background, but you've got these all these sails and ropes. And you've got an elephant being hoisted up here. And it just looks so much fun. They're quite cartoonish, these puzzles. And the same with the Mordillo and they're just they're really fun i mean I, ha I had a lot of fun with captain flint's party and i can't wait to get through all of the other hay puzzles in my collection whether they're missing pieces or not i really can't wait to get to those and build them and yeah so i i was really really grateful i was chuffed a bit so thank you so much lynn and one other thing she also sent me lynn makes handmade cards and also we handmade puzzles. So she sent me one of her handmade cards and she sent me one of her handmade puzzles, which I have built. Look, it even stands the puzzle pickup. <laughs> 
and it says it's cats along a wall which is a gradient and it says wishing you a poor Sunday so that was really cute and I just I thought that was really really lovely so I want to thank you Lynn so so much and if you want to check out her handmade cards and her wee handmade puzzles she has an Instagram and that is handmade underscore by Lynn and Lynn is spelled L-Y-N-N-E E. and she's got some lovely wee handmade cards this one's got a little mouse on it looking through a telescope at the sky and it says wow and it's really cute so yeah go and have a look at that she's got some really lovely cards and this wee puzzle it just made my day so thank you so much Lynn for sending me this I can't wait to do it okay now we move on to the large puzzles yeah I've got two or three large piece count puzzles to show you today as well. So I'm going to reach over because they're off the camera over here. Ah, the first one, another 6,000 piece Clementoni puzzle to add to my collection. And I do mean collection because I seem to have quite a lot of them now. This is artwork by Mordillo and it's called The Kiss. And I've had my eye on this one for quite a while. It just, it looks like a fun, colourful, cheery image. Again, cartoonish artwork, funny. This was another gift from my very good friend who uh, sent me the challenge puzzles. And I would like to thank that person very, very, very much indeed for sending me this. I was so, so chuffed to get this. So quite when I'm going to get around to it, I don't know <laughs> because I've got another 6,000 piece puzzle waiting for me to do. And that one's a Piatnik. I actually just very recently this week, hit 6,000 subscribers on my channel. I'm overwhelmed. I'm just, I'm overwhelmed at the support that people are showing for this channel. I really, I really do appreciate all of your support, the subscriptions, the comments, the likes, the views. I really, I really do appreciate it. Thank you so, 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 so much. And in keeping with my usual tradition, I will be building a 6,000 piece puzzle and it will be the Piatnik puzzle, the playing cards puzzle. And I can't wait to do that puzzle. So that is coming up soon as well. There's so much coming up. But this one is the Mordillo puzzle, The Kiss, and it's by Clementoni. So very excited about that one. I'm super duper excited about this next one. <laughs> Any kind of big puzzle, super duper excited. This is me, this is me talking. So large puzzles, I just, I just love, 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 love them. This particular puzzle, I have had my eye on since I saw it on Facebook. It's a new puzzle out. And as soon as I saw the image, I thought that is gorgeous and I would really love to give it a try. Unfortunately, for a good while, it was only available in Italy. It's a Clementoni puzzle and it was only available on the Clementoni Italy website. I did see one on eBay, but it was very expensive and I kind of figured that it would roll out into other countries eventually and it would be more available for people to buy across Europe and so on. So I waited patiently, well impatiently to be honest, <laughs> I waited impatiently and finally I did a search and one came up in a wee shop in the UK and it was a more reasonable price and I thought right I'm, I'm getting it, I'm getting it. <laughs> so I'll show you the puzzle. It is the second 13,000 200 piece Clementoni puzzle that I now own. The first one being, of course, the Disney Orchestra, which I did quite some time ago. It's called Visionaria, and the image is just so gorgeous. There's so much color. You've got greens, pinks, purples, blues, yellows, white. There's just everything. There's flowers, there's grass, there's statues. There's a wee boat in the middle. You've got a gorgeous gradient sunset sky. There's a hot air balloon. There's a Pegasus unicorn. What do they call them when it's both? Alicorn? I don't know. I don't know. It's been a while since I've watched My Little Pony. <laughs> so anyway, there's, and it's got these fantastical elements, which again is just right up my street in puzzles. And I have, have been wanting to admittedly mix 
a 13,200 piece puzzle. But when I saw this, I thought, right, I'm getting that and I'm mixing that puzzle. So this will be a puzzle that I will mix and it will be the largest piece count puzzle that I will have attempted to build so far. I've done 9,000 pieces, so it doesn't seem completely unreasonable that I could do 13,200. So yeah, look out for this. At some stage in the future, I will be mixing it and I will be building it and I cannot wait! I love it! I really, really love it. So I'm going to keep this one on the table because I have no space beside me on the floor. So I'm going to put that over there. For my next and final puzzle in this puzzle haul, I have to show you something very, very, very special. But in order to do that, we need a change of perspective. to receive this puzzle. <laughs> right. Okay, so the story behind this puzzle, which is called Disney's Memorable Moments by Ravensburger. It's a 40,320 piece puzzle and is now the largest large piece count puzzle that I own. Prior to that, it was the epic 33,600 piece wildlife puzzle. Now it's that one. <laughs> So I, I've wanted to do that puzzle for a long time. I have, I have always loved the image on it. I love a large piece count puzzle that is one whole image. And that one is 10 smaller ones. But you know what? The images are just so gorgeous. And it's just such a spectacular puzzle that I knew at one stage I would want to get it and build it. And I love Disney puzzles. And now I have it. I've had it for a couple of weeks now. I've had it in my flat for a couple of weeks. And I'm still gobsmacked that I now own this puzzle. <laughs> it was an early birthday gift. So it's my birthday in September. So my birthday is coming up. And I was gifted this puzzle. It was a surprise. I knew something was coming, but I didn't know what it was. I assumed it would be a large puzzle because the person that sent it to me was very excited about me receiving it and is also really into puzzles himself. And when it arrived, before I even opened the box, I knew what it was. It was a really big box, obviously, and the tape on it said Ravensburger. And I thought, my goodness, this can only be one of two puzzles. Unless it's just a huge stack of many puzzles. <laughs> obviously, there are two 40,320 piece puzzles. There's also the, was it Mickey Through the Years, I think it is, which is the same size. And then there's the memorable moments. So I thought, this can only be one of those. I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. I was totally overwhelmed. And when I opened it and saw it, it's the first time I've ever seen this puzzle in reality. Like I've seen pictures of it in, having been finished. I've seen pictures of the box, but I've never been into a shop and seen it in the flesh, so to speak. So when it came and I got it out of the box, I was like, it's just huge. I can't believe how huge this is. How am I gonna move it? <laughs> I'm so excited. I don't know if you've noticed, my excitement is off the charts about that puzzle. And I can't wait, I can't wait to get around to it. I, I, when that'll happen, I've no idea. Still have wildlife to do. I've actually opened the fifth bag of wildlife. The pile of pieces for that is in front of me. You can't see it on the camera, but it's right there. And I will be finishing wildlife first before I start anything like that. But I just can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait! Did I tell you I can't wait? <laughs> so that was the last puzzle in my puzzle haul. A very big, heavy, large piece count puzzle haul. I'm so excited about each and every one of these puzzles and for all of the gifted puzzles, Betty, Lynn, thank you so so much for sending me those puzzles. Thank you Uni Dragon, and thank you to my very very good friend who sent me this puzzle as well. I just can't thank you enough. I'm so, so grateful. Thank you so much. Thank you all for 6,000 subscribers. 
every one of you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for all your support and for continuing to watch my channel. I really, really do appreciate that. Just before I head off, and close this video today. I just want to say that I will be providing links in the description below to all of these puzzles and they will be Amazon associate links for both the UK Amazon and for the US Amazon. I still haven't figured out, there's supposed to be an easy way to merge everything and make it so that it takes you to your own particular store in your own particular country but it just whatever I'm doing I'm not doing it right <laughs> so it doesn't really work that way so what I've been doing is I've been putting two links in one for UK and one for US so it's really just to say that if you like to shop on Amazon and if you would be looking to buy one of these puzzles anyway or you've been inspired to buy them from watching this please consider using those associate links because it won't cost you any more than the labelled price, but I do receive a commission um, from those sales and it all just goes back into helping the channel. So please do consider using those if you want to buy any one of these puzzles. And again, just thank you so much for watching. Let me know what your favourite puzzle is. Which one are you most excited about? Which one do you are you intrigued by? Do you think is really lovely and can't wait to see a video on? I can't wait to hear your thoughts on this. So please leave a comment, leave a like if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.